Hi everybody, Jonathan here from realtimerendering.com. Now today, really exciting, we're going to carry on looking at the new Enscape for Mac beta. Uh, so this is an open beta that's been out for a little while now. It's finally gone a bit more public and we can take another look at this in a bit more detail. I've made one video on this already, but I've got a lot more planned. So I really hope you're looking forward to joining the uh, journey with me as we discover what Enscape for Mac is all about. Thanks for watching everybody. Hi everybody, Jonathan here with another Enscape and SketchUp video today. Now, have you noticed I'm running on my Mac? There's the Apple symbol and you can see I'm actually running uh, an M1 Pro using Monterey at the moment. So that's fine, we've got SketchUp running there. But have you seen, we've now got the ability to run Enscape and I'm basically running the open beta copy of Enscape. So basically you get a nice little welcome screen here um, telling you about the Enscape and how to start it, of course, if you don't know that. And I come with some of the kind of basic controls here. So what we're gonna do is close this. And without further ado, I'm basically just gonna kind of pan around my SketchUp model and then we're gonna review this in Enscape and see how it looks. Now this is a project I did a little while ago, uh, just a really simple project for some improvements to a home where we did a nice little kind of new uh, porch and mainly the project was kind of just extending around the back. So, you know, very much a sort of typical small scale residential uh, architectural project. But even so, it's nice to be able to kind of visualize these both in SketchUp, but also Enscape too. So let's go ahead, let's just click the Start Enscape button. You will also notice that you have a Start Enscape palette down here on the Enscape palette of tools, but I like to have them docked up here. Let's go for it then, let's click Start Enscape. And that'll take a few seconds to load the file into Enscape while it's loading up. And we'll should see, yeah, and there's the Enscape application there loading in this window to the side. And here we go, we've got some information about Enscape for Mac. So really super excited to see the new version of Enscape for Mac. It's early days, it's still the open beta at the moment. Um, but as you can see, we've got it here and looking good. You know, we can kind of slide through the different times of the day and sort of orbit round in real time pretty much and just pan around and it seems really responsive actually. I think one thing you'll notice is uh, the rendering quality kind of improves the longer you leave it. So when you first sort of make a change you can see it's quite grainy and then that sort of graininess tidies up. But this definitely qualifies as a real-time rendering software in that you know you're getting very nice sort of quality real-time rendering. And notice things like the grass in SketchUp is also translating over to that Enscape grass as well. Okay, so let me see if I can kind of put this into a, sort of like a split screen mode for you. Um, so I've got a couple of views here. So what I'm gonna do is click the synchronize view button and you'll notice immediately Enscape on the right side has synchronized to my view here now. So as I double click through to my scenes, um, if I want to, for the different views. You can see they're absolutely instantaneous. And there's an internal view. We'll come back to that inside one in a moment. Okay, so there we go, that's really good. The scenes seem to be working really nicely. And now that I've got my synchronized view button on, you can see I can manipulate around, let's just get rid of that little palette there, in pretty much real time. As we've now had a look at orbiting around the model is the kind of walkthrough test, if you like. So I'm going to click onto uh, the walk tool and let's just kind of just walk along the model. And you can see, uh, yeah, that's fine. It's looking pretty smooth. And as soon as I kind of release on the other side, the refinement kicks in. Um, so if you do want to, we can flick into full screen view at any time and just sort of have a look at that model in all its glory, if you like, in the Enscape side of the screen. Again, I can't resist just sort of playing around with that lighting and sort of seeing how that works. Now here you can see, as I go scroll through that lighting, um, there's a lot of kind of changes and the graininess appears, but then it refines and really kind of quickly disappears. Um, so as soon as you release, so I think what's going on here is it's my GPU uh, running most of this process. In fact, what I'm actually gonna do is just pop open my activity monitor and you can see here's Enscape sort of dominating the uh, processing. But if I prop up my GPU history, this will be quite interesting. Um, because let's sort of do a bit of an orbit round and you can see, you know, while I'm using Enscape, of course my GPU is absolutely maxed out to the, to the hilt. Um, if you'd gone for an M1 Pro uh, or an M1 Max rather, 
I think, you know, you would find you're going to get a better frame rate and I'd be interesting to see the difference in terms of sort of the speed of rendering and, you know, that transition of things like the quality and how quickly that, that improves. But I'm, you know, I'm pretty pleased with my laptop and the performance I'm getting. Okay, great. So let's just kind of resize that window once more. I like the way it resizes. That's kind of cool. And let's just pop back over. I'll leave that running on that side of the screen. So let's just kind of go back to a few of those save views once again. And let's have a look at inside now. So um, if we go to inside the model, I'm quite interested to see the kind of quality of renderers we're going to get inside. Now, let's just kind of make that full screen for a moment. And again, let's once again do the lighting test. So we're holding shift down and the right click of the mouse button just to kind of change that lighting through the course of the day. And look at that, it looks really good actually. You know, that's really, really nice. And you're never gonna get this kind of quality in SketchUp itself. Okay, so I'm very happy with that. Now, another really nice little feature here is the fact that you can adjust the view and then you can click onto the view management button. And then if you would like to record that view, let's just sort of pan around a bit more. Let's just walk through to that space. I think that looks really good. Yeah, I'm really happy with that view. So let's click create view. You can rename the view, but you see it's uh, Endscape Scene 2 is fine. Let's click Create. And then when we go back, let's minimize again back into SketchUp. So we can see that side of the window too. You can see um, we've already got that new view. So there was the previous view, which was slightly different. There's that new one. And there's the previous view as well. So that's a really nice integration, this two-way integration of the views. Okay, now another little test I really want to try is um, downloading something from the 3D Warehouse and just see how this works in SketchUp and then adding it to my model. So I'm just gonna go in and basically choose uh, an item. Let's go and search for a chair. So there we go, it's a recent search. Now, as you know, the SketchUp Warehouse has a ton of content. Um, you know, some of it's a little bit variable in terms of quality. But let's go for it. Here's a nice sort of classic chair. Let's click download. And yes, I can load that straight into my model from SketchUp, uh, from the 3D Warehouse. So that's one of the nice aspects, this connection to the 3D Warehouse, and it's one of the big benefits of using SketchUp. But what I'm interested to see is how rapidly this will uh, populate my scene. So I'm just waiting for that model to download. And let's click and just see how quickly that loads in on the Enscape side. So it just takes a couple of seconds while it loads that new geometry in. Let's just make sure we've got our view uh, synchronized there. Let's click this one. There we go. That's pretty good. That's really cool, actually. So let's now click on to uh, the move test. So let's go for uh, moving and duplicating. So I'm going to get my move tool. I'm going to hold down the Alt key and just see if we can kind of duplicate that chair. And that worked really, really well, actually. So you can see it's very easy to both uh, manipulate. Let's move that one there. And let's have a go with the rotate. Let's go for the rotate tool. Just sort of spin that chair around 90 degrees. And all seems pretty good, actually, in terms of kind of moving things around and just being able to sort of see that immediately updating on that side of the screen. Excellent. So I think, you know, with a powerful computer, um, you will be able to kind of work in both uh, Enscape and SketchUp at the same time and have those views synchronized. Now, normally, of course, I'd part this uh, view on my other big screen. One thing you will find, though, uh, when the screen is sort of full size, as I say, there's a lot more pixels to calculate in the renderer. OK, so we've established that it's really easy to work in SketchUp um, and sort of navigate around the file and just sort of visualize that lighting in real time. Just want to touch again on the views. Uh, so if I go to my view management again, you'll notice that I've actually got my preset scenes up here that I can double click through. So I'm just going to kind of rewind and maximize the screen here. And what I really want to show you here was a nice little feature where we can adapt the materials. OK, so what we'll do, we'll go into our SketchUp and get our palette. Let's get some sort of ash felt, for example, and just watch. As soon as I click, you'll notice the material updates. But then what we can do is we can actually go down to the uh, Enscape Material Editor. And here is that new material here. And we'll be able to kind of make some changes within that. And you can see that as I kind of slide down things like the darkness of that material, just gets a bit more realistic. And you've got some nice sort of channels. You've got the actual sort of texture channel itself. 
uh, reflections and things like height maps as well. Now I actually haven't got a, a bump map in this particular one. I guess we could load one in if we had one and that would make a quite a significant difference to the material uh, just to give a sort of nice um, extra kind of polish to that material there. So that's all you need to do if you want to change the materials just go into uh, the SketchUp uh, Enscape Material Manager and you're away with modifying those materials. So another really nice thing is the view management. I um, talked about this a moment ago, but I just want to show you how um, we can also use this to set up some visual settings. So let's kind of go and get a really nice view, sort of frame up that particular view there, and we'll click Create View. And you'll notice that you can actually link this to visual settings. Um, so if I do want to, I could link it to a white card setting. So let's just go through and set that up. And maybe we'll just have some nice outlines on that as well. So here we go. We've got a kind of much more kind of different type of sketch view that we would like to uh, snapshot. So when we come to our final output, let's just adjust that lighting a little bit there. We can go through to the export tab and basically it's a really simple process of clicking the single button up there. Let's just choose where we want to uh, render our, let's just pick a new renders folder. For this renders here and let's just call this uh, v1 and you'll notice it only takes just a couple of sessions for it to actually capture the image and save the screenshot and when we open that final screenshot uh, it will be a lot higher quality as well okay so just back into the visual settings um, you can also adapt the rendering quality here depending on the performance and the gpu you have uh, you've also got things like depth of field that you can introduce and turn off things like the autofocus as well. Um, you can see that it's really quite nice the way you can kind of put the focal point into various sort of parts of the model as well. Let's just put that autofocus back on for now and we'll turn the depth of field off. Um, we've also got the ability to go two point perspective, which obviously corrects um, the perspective correction. And we've got orthogonal views. Now this is really interesting in that you can basically get some very nice uh, sort of isometric type views and things like elevations as well. So that's a really nice little view of my project. I'm very happy with that. So what I'm gonna do is just go into my management, create a view and let's click create. And also I'm just gonna go ahead and render out that snapshot and just see how long that takes. Let's go through to my folder where we're storing all our little renders. Let's just call that V2. And what we'll do, we'll review these images at the end, just so you can see how high quality they are. Um, don't forget though, you want to go to output. And at the moment, I'm only rendering these at uh, HD quality. Uh, I prefer to render HD, uh, ultra HD rather. So 4K, okay, so I'm gonna crank it up to 4K now. One really other very nice thing is we can use SketchUp to actually set up our views. And sometimes this is a bit easier than trying to do it in Enscape itself. So for example, we've got the shortcuts here. If we go to Command uh, 1, you can see we've got a nice sort of top plan view. So let's just bring it back to that top plan. I'm gonna use H to move around. I'm just gonna zoom in. So that's pretty cool. So let's create that. And that's gonna be um, a new view that we've created. Let's go through and do that process one more time. So this time I'll use Command 3 to put it into a front view, create that view. Let's just call this Enscape View 6, that's fine. And let's do 4, see what happens. That's the back view and that's really nice, that perspective view there. So you can see how quick it is just to be able to whiz through the shortcuts uh, using SketchUp to actually kind of control those views. And if we do want to, as I say, if we just go through to a completely parallel projection, then let's just zoom in a bit here. What you get is a really nice sort of pure elevation um, of the project itself. Just for a moment, I might just right click and hide that fence. And there's obviously another object there. Let's just right click and hide that too. There we go. Uh, apart from that little line there, let's just hide that one. So there's a really nice little elevational view where I can basically get a very nice render created. So let's go for it. Let's just render that view and let's just pop that into our folder one more time. Let's call that V3. So this is a 4K rendering. Um, you should see that the rendering doesn't take that long. In fact, just really a few seconds. And let's review that um, in the project in a moment. And But the quality of that should be excellent. 
Well, everybody, let's just review some of the images I made during the course of this little uh, presentation on Enscape for Mac using this new open beta that uh, people are sort of playing with and testing at the moment. I'd love to know what you guys think. I'm really excited about the idea of another real-time rendering software on the Mac platform. And now with the new M1 and Pro hardware that Apple have released, this is a big time for Apple and we need that real-time rendering software. So please drop some likes uh, and drop some comments. I'd love to hear what you think and see you in the next video. Thanks for watching everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you.